Hi, welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. Uh, somebody asked if we could um, show rekeying a screen door cylinder. So I thought we might as well do that. Uh, we've got three, well basically two types of cylinders here. We have the pin, pin cylinder. This takes five pins and it's a screen door cylinder because it has the floating part on the side. This one as well has the floating part on the side. That's the pin and this one here is the what we call the disc. So this works by having a pin, a pin, spring. These ones work by having discs which go around and they're sprung on the side which I'll show you as well. So I don't have keys for these ones but um, I might as well just quickly rekey one just to show you. A lot of the time it's easier just to buy new screen door cylinders. If you are looking to change the key combination just purchase some new cylinders, swap them over. It's going to be a lot easier. But if you want to see how it's done I'll, I can rekey one for you. So this one here um, I can see on the side here it's got a if I look down into the cylinder, I can see a little notch just on the side. That tells me it's this key here, which has a f no notch on it's flat on one side and, and a groove going down one side. That's a very common one for a screen door. Uh, that's the same key there. And this one here is a different key again. That's the odd one out. Uh, a lot of other screen doors come on this type of key here, which is LF43. Uh, very common. Um, if not, they come on like the C4 or LW5, depending on which number you want to you want to do it. All right, so let's get into it. This one here has pins, like a, like I was saying. So to access this one, different depending on what type of brand you're using, but a lot of the time there's two screws on the top. You take those, well, two screws out all, all together, and then you can access all your pins and springs. In there, I'll, I'll empty them out, just so you can see what's in there. They don't often come out too easily as well, so I like to get a key in there, clean them out. Then I look, like to look right down there, make sure that um, everything's cleaned out. From there, I get my pins, which look like this. And I can actually go through, because they're numbered, and select out which numbers I want. So, for example, this key here, it would be something like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which is not a very good combination, but it's just a key I've got lying around. That key right there, if I wanted to key that up, I would put that in. And then I would use the number one pin. And I would drop in one, 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 all the way across for bottom pins. Then I would come through and grab my top pin. You can always tell a top pin because it is, if I can grab some tweezers and show you. Oh, where are my tweezers? Can't find my tweezers. But that's basically a bottom pin there. It's got no lead edge. Sorry, it's got no point on one side. A normal pin has a point on one side. These are just uh, flat on both sides. So that's a top pin. And this is a bottom pin. Sorry, that's a bottom pin. Has a little tiny cone shape or point on one side. So you go bottom pin, top pin, and then you come through with these springs all the way along here. And then you put them back in on top. If you find your springs have been crushed it's a good idea just to give them a little pull and just to stretch them out a bit. That basically allows the bottom pin and the top pin to be pushed down via the spring. If the cylinder is fitted upside down sometimes they are and things and you've got weak springs the locks are not exactly going to work too well because it has to push the bottom pin all the way up to here and the top pins pushing that as well and then the springs so make sure you've got good springs. Right, so that's that one. I won't go through and uh, do all of that one. It'll just take forever. I might as well do uh, one of these, one of these discs, one, disc ones. They're also called wafer locks as well. That's something else. Now, at the back of it, sorry, in the middle, at the back of each cylinder. Like that's a cylinder. That's a cylinder. You'll see there's a little um, push in or a little disc, spring loaded disc, which holds a barrel. So, what's it called? Technical term: uh, plug retainer plug retainer. So I'm going to use a pick here I'm just going to push that in and I'm just going to see if I can um, push out this, this plug. Keep in mind these cylinders are very old. They've been sitting around. The uh, lubricant in them has gone so hard it's like almost grease. Well it's like glue I mean. Okay so there's our retainer at the back there. So that needs to be pushed in to be able to slide the barrel out. Sometimes when you're sliding the barrel out you've got to get your pick in there and kind of wiggle it out and wiggle 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 so you push the thing in the back and then you wiggle 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 to get to get it out 
Alright, so if I wanted to do a change combo on this, first thing I'd do is I'd find out my current combination. So I'd put a key blank in there. Now this particular key here has a has a big side and a small side. That's a big, that's a small. Looking at our disc, discs, they're all sprung on the one side. The spring is on this side, which, sorry, half of them are sprung on this side, half of them are sprung on this side. You can tell by the circular part on there circular part on there so we put it in and then we work out what the code is okay so here I would probably I'll get a pen and paper just so I can uh, write this down okay, here's an old scrappy bit of paper looking at it from this direction I would probably say uh, three now the next cut that's the first cut there the next cut is over this side and nothing's happening with that cut it's actually lined up perfectly just by the key blank height so I would be saying a one uh, the next one there I'd probably be saying another three um, and then I'm looking at the fourth cut here I'd be saying a number two um, and then the next one I'd be saying it's a one I'm happy where it sits and then the next one's a two it's just slightly up a little bit and the Ooh, is that a three? How many have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, two, four, six, eight, ten. We've got two, four, six. Okay, so we're not there yet. Three and one, I'm happy with. Uh, three and two, I'm happy with. Uh, one and two, I'm happy with. And I'd be saying, uh, yep. It's a one and I'll be putting another two there. And I think that'll be it. One, two, three, four. Nope, we're still short. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's start this again. Okay, so we're going this side. We got a three. We got a one on that side. Uh Yeah, that's definitely uh, definitely one on that side. Definitely a three on that side. Okay, I've got a two over that side. I've got a two over that side. Oh, I'm sorry, a three. Then we move to this side. We've got a one and a two. And then that side, we've got a one and a two again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's it. So now I've got my um, combination and I, I could actually go and cut this key by code, which I'm not going to do. The next option is to actually pull the, pull the discs out and then juggle them around. I've got what code it should be, so I could just pretty much grab a screwdriver, uh, prise them out and then re put them in a new order and then cut, cut my key to code. Now these discs are always hard to get out, you've actually got to, you see the side with the circle? So I've just got that one out there. That's the disc. That's the spring in there. Okay, so that's a uh, second disc. And you can see the size of it. There it is there. So that's uh, that one would be a three. Okay, so that corresponding to here is this one right here. What I like to do is just basically um, pull a couple out. And if I was doing the cylinder for real, I'd be doing both sides at the same time. That way, when I pull a disc out, I can do the same on the other side of the cylinder. Really need a flat blade screwdriver for this one. Uh, nope, that's not a flat. There's a flat blade. There's a little flat blade. So let's get this one out. They are a little bit hard to get out sometimes. There is a special tool for it, but I've never been, never really owned one. Okay, so I've got those two discs out, uh, that one and that one, so they're both, you know, we've got a two and a three, there's not a lot of specialness there, and pull that one out there, okay. So all of those are about the same height, really what I want to do is I want to put a one in place of a three, and three in place of a one, because there's only so many heights on this, 
so I'm going to pull some out on the other side as well and also when I flip it over I'm most likely going to lose a couple of these springs so I'm doing it in this so that way I can just pick up those springs afterwards other people have different methods but this is just an example video okay there's one of my discs I'll pull that one out too. Sometimes you can only do um, certain combinations to allow the key to actually slide in and out. These ones are pretty sure you get away with all of the all of the different combinations because they're not got heat. Uh, they're not got large differences between it. So a one and a three or a two. It's not a very steep angle, but it's kind of creating. Okay, so there we go. I've pulled out enough enough discs. So when I look at my chart here. Um, originally I started off, uh, so I haven't done anything with the first chamber, that was a 3 and a 1. Then I had a 1 over this side and a 3 over this side, I've only got 1 left, so that was a 1. So I will go for a 3. See all this work, uh, you know, it's easier just to swap them over. Now when you look at your discs, you look at that one and you look at this one, they look pretty similar they most likely are you can tell the the depth on the disc by the amount of meat around this section so if it doesn't have much meat you could say that it's uh, most likely a, a light cut because it will allow more of the key to go through if it's got a lot of meat sometimes it's a really deep cut or vice versa so all right so I'm uh, on this side so I was looking for we were, it was already already a one, so I think I might put in a, a three. So where the where the key had a very little groove, now the key will have to have a very deep groove. So if the old key goes back into this cylinder, it's going to push this um, this little disc won't line up to the shear line. It'll be in a completely different spot. So is that one in? So that being the whole idea of it, that the old key, when it goes in there, will not be able to be jiggled, pulled backwards or forwards to create the same combination. Okay, so now we're on this one. Um, I had a two, so I'll probably, probably go for this one here, which has a lot more meat on the disc. So I find it easy just to do this simultaneously. If you're gonna shuffle them, just do it off the cuff best to do two sides at the same same time so I'd have one here and one here and then I'd do this one and then do this one do this one do this one and do them identical that's the easiest kind of way that way if you do something on one it's going to be corresponding on the other and then once you've reloaded all the discs up you've only really got to cut the key and you're done and cutting key to code I did that on another one so okay so all our discs are back in I'll just check, they're all spring-loaded, yes, spring-loaded, yes. I'm putting my key in the right way, yes. Now I can check the configuration of this. So I can go on this side and I can say uh, a three and a one. So that matches what we had before. And now I have a one and a one. So that's a difference there. So that's a difference there. So there's one disc different already in the first four. Uh, then I go to the next one there and I've got a two and a two two and a two so there's another one there that's um uh lower and then i've got the ones and the ones at the back so i've basically juggled about three there's about three to four little differences in that from me uh pulling them apart juggling them around and doing that now basically i could um, go through and cut the key so i'd go through and cut the key the way these keys work is um, you've got a high side and low side, so I'd cut the grooves on that side, and then I'd cut the grooves on that side. Um, cut as many keys as needed, and then put it back in the cylinder and work. Um, we've done key cutting before, so I don't want to bore you to death and do that. Once, uh, once it's all done together, then I have to put it back in the cylinder. Here's my cylinder. I'm going to push in that retainer, taking note of where the little dicky thing is. That goes into the milled section. If you can see it, there's like a, a little moon section down the back, so that will drop into there. So I'll start off by just putting uh, putting it up against the cylinder, using my pick, pushing the retainer in, and then sliding it all the way back in, putting a key in there, twisting it left and right, checking my retainer's popped out, which it has right here, and that would be it. And if the key was cut, it would be 
to code. I'm sorry, it would be cut to code, then would be operating the cylinder. But basically, that's how we recalibrate um, a double-sided screen door cylinder, lazy cam. This being the lazy cam, that is how we recalibrate it. You can buy discs, and you can do it a number of different ways. Generally, on a job, uh, you don't have these type of pitting kits, mainly because they're swapped out a lot. So this is just a quick, easy solution to uh, to a problem if you wanted to. Most of the times when you rekey something, it's best to at least uh, change two to three to four chambers. Some people change them all, which is great. Some people get a bit lazy and just change one chamber only by a little bit, and that's really sloppy because sometimes the you know you could bounce a key and do things along that line. The way I do is I just take out half a dozen, flip them around, put them back in, and that's you know nowhere near the possibility of matching a combination ever again and then I just cut the key up to code so that's how I would do it on saying that these cylinders are about you know 20 to 25 bucks you buy a couple you get them key to like so you can use the same key in the front the same key in the back much easier option um, I like these cylinders more because you can match them to your screen door uh, sorry your screen door can be matched to your front door your side door because it uses this standard uh, Lockwood key uh, LW4 LW4 or C4 um, so I really like these um, cylinders more. A lot of the time what we do is we, we re-key a whole house and then we key, we key up a couple of cylinders. So it means that when somebody gets home, they can use one key for the front, one key for the back, one key for the side. We've even got window locks now that you can match on this same key as well. So we pop in a cylinder. I mean, these cylinders in price-wise, these ones here cost us a few more dollars um, compared to these ones, but it's well worth it. A lot of the time we go in and we Put a new locks in or anything we'll just use one of these cylinders straight off the bat we generally don't like these cylinders or use them much uh, we find the bigger key more versatile more universal um, easier to pick when as a locksmith if you wanted to pick or easy to rekey so they're a much better product a little bit more friendly um, i believe they've got you know a little bit more security as with these ones they're the, they're the type that you could you know use a piece of wire stick in there and just jiggle uh, there is other ones that take the smaller key here, they're even easier. So if you were to get some like a, a nail file or something like that, or an old worn out key, you could put it in there and just jiggle away and, and possibly get it to work. As with this one here, it's a little bit harder. You will need to use a tension tool and, and manipulate those all five of those pins. So that's a that's a reasonable sort of challenge, um, you know, for people who don't pick locks or people who are trying to break in who don't have those um, skills. So I like these ones more. Anyway, that's our quick video on rekeying a screen door lock cylinder. Keep in mind, difference between these cylinders and other cylinders is screen door lock cylinders have the floating middle part and uh, ones for front doors. This part here is solid. It doesn't move. Floating 